Greetings and welcome to worship with Winnetka Congregational Church, a non-denominational Christian church where you are welcome as you are, as you feel God made you to be. We are glad to be with you for worship through our virtual channel. If you're able, we hope you'll also join us in person every Sunday at 9 a.m. on the church lawn if weather is good or indoors if it's not. Outdoors masking and distancing are completely up to you. Whatever makes you and your children feel comfortable. Indoors, we recommend masks and distancing only for anyone older than age two who is not fully vaccinated, per the phase five guidelines. Those who are fully vaccinated do not need to mask or to distance indoors. And you don't need to sign up. Just come and why not bring a friend? No matter which form of worship you choose, your presence is a blessing. So too is your weekly financial support, which you can make at WinnetkaCongregationalChurch.org. Our ministry depends on your amazing generosity, so we thank you for your heartfelt support. As our worship continues, let's embrace Christ's gentle prompt to find the quiet center to clear the chaos and the clutter so that we can see what truly matters, can be at peace, and can simply be. Amen. Come unto me, says Jesus, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, says Jesus, and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light.
be with you. Truth be told, Lord, sometimes we feel like sheep without a shepherd. Who can guide us, comfort us? Who can provide what we need? Sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night with a concern or worry that's weighing on our minds and hearts. Who or what will calm us down? We know we're not the only ones who experience this, but it often feels like we're all alone as we face our troubles. Lord, in this service and in every moment, be our shepherd. Lead us by your example. Lead us by your love. Sit with us, hear us, hold us, speak to us, or not. But do heal us in our places of deep psychic and physical distress. Amen. In some churches, it's the custom for the pastor to give each newly confirmed young person a short Bible verse to memorize and to carry in their hearts all throughout their lives. Here's one of those confirmation verses. It comes from 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you. Join me now in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning to all our children and to our whole church family. I have in my hands this morning a really big book. It's not just big, it's, it's heavy. I can lift this book with one hand, but it takes a lot of effort, actually. When I lift it with two hands, it's still heavy, but it gets a little easier. Now, what do you think I could do to make it even easier to lift this book? Okay, besides getting a lighter book. Did any of you say ask for help? Well, that's a great idea. Ask for help. Because the loads that we carry, the problems that we face, the feelings that we feel are always lighter and easier to deal with when we ask for help. When there are more hands to carry the weight. And that's a great way to think about Jesus as an extra set of hands that are always willing to help us when things are hard or heavy. Jesus' love for each of us is so very, very strong, stronger than we could ever say. And he's always there to help us, always. But even if we all were to help lift this really heavy book, if we kept lifting and lifting and lifting it, eventually, we'd get tired, right? And what would we need to do then, besides getting a lighter book? That's right, stop and take a break. Just like when we're hungry, we need to stop and get something to eat. And Jesus wants us to know, wants us to know that, that he's always willing to help us, especially when things are heavy or hard but that it's also important to take time and take those breaks so that we can feel God's peace in our hearts and we can regain our energy in our bodies for what each day brings. This coming week, I hope that you ask others, as well as Jesus, for help and that you take time to just sit and rest and listen for God's gentle whisper, which is always saying to each of us, I'm with you, I'll help you, and I love you forever and ever. Amen. And we look forward to seeing you next Sunday.
A reading from the New Testament, the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34, and then verses 53 to 56. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him everything they had done and taught. Many people were coming and going, so there was no time to eat. He said to the apostles, Come by yourselves to a secluded place and rest for a while. They departed in a boat by themselves for a deserted place. Many people saw them leaving and recognized them. So they ran ahead from all the cities and arrived before them. When Jesus arrived and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Then he began to teach them many things. When Jesus and his disciples had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret, anchored the boat, and came ashore. People immediately recognized Jesus and ran around that whole region, bringing sick people on their mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, villages, cities, or farming communities, they would place the sick in the marketplaces and beg him to allow them to touch even the hem of his clothing. Everyone who touched him was healed. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O gracious God, may our reading, our musical meditations, the silent meditations of our hearts and the words from my mouth be worthy in your eyes and serve to build your church. Amen. As Christians, we seek to understand Jesus, who he was, is, and forever shall be. As Christians, we seek to hear, examine, and apply his teachings to the betterment of ourselves, our relationships, and our world, which we serve in his holy name. In a phrase, a very familiar phrase, as Christians, we seek to follow Jesus, to follow him. But it's hard to follow him if at first we don't see him, and often, I think we don't. We don't see him. It's not because he's invisible, because he's not. It's not because he hides from us, because he wouldn't. And it's not because we lack the capacity to see Jesus, because we don't. I think it's because we can all too easily and all too often just look right past him or right through him. We can look right past Jesus when life is going well enough. And when we think, however consciously, I really don't need Jesus right now, do I? I mean, right now things are good, maybe even great, and so I'll just park Jesus over there in the firehouse until the next time I need to dial. 911. And when we do get to one of those so called 911 moments, which are inevitable in life, the strength and urgency of our need can cause us to look right through Jesus, can cause us to see only our need and only the resolution that we're seeking, but to be blind to the one from whom we're seeking it, and to make our interactions with Jesus transactional instead of relational. Ironically, and scripture is often illuminatingly ironic, the very same needs that can drive us to bench, bypass, or be blind to Jesus as God's embodied word of love can also provide a window into Jesus, can help us deepen our faith and to grow closer with Christ. That's precisely what today's passage from Mark does. It empowers us to see Jesus, not merely Jesus as the transactional font of our relief, but instead, Jesus as the one who comes to assure us that we are not alone, 
that our God is with us, and that he comes not only to serve us, but to teach us how to live a life of meaning and empathy and also a life of balance. The scene that Marx so vividly paints is fraught with needs. The needs are real, ubiquitous, and relentless. The needs do not stop. As Mark reports, wherever Jesus goes, the needs don't just follow Jesus, they actually anticipate his next move, his next destination, and they queue up for him breathlessly before he even arrives. It brings to mind images of how modern-day paparazzi stalk celebrities, or how countless frenzied bargain hunters queue up in the dark and press against the glass of retail stores hours, even days, before the doors open on Black Friday. With surpassing brilliance and care, Mark underscores the profundity of the human need bearing down upon Jesus, not to focus our attention on the needs themselves, but so as to fashion a sacred lens through which we can truly, yes, see Jesus. A lens through which we can better understand and can more viscerally appreciate the collective yoke of need that each of us and all of humanity is constantly placing on Jesus' divine yet still fully human shoulders. The goal is not to induce a dampening guilt. That's neither Mark nor Christ's wish. The goal is to inspire a fresh sense of just how giving, how committed, and how awesome Jesus is. When we have a better sense of what someone is going through, in this case, Jesus, our understanding and our appreciation deepen. Our empathy grows. And our capacity to minister, serve, and love in Christ's name is multiplied. So, too, is our understanding of what allows us to serve in a way that's healthy, effective, and sustainable. In short, in a way that makes room for breaks, for breathers, for rest and refreshment. Life can get busy, very busy, and our pace can become frenetic, more frenetic than we're even aware at times. In wanting to get ahead or to get it all done or to serve our families, our friends, our clients, our goals, our ambitions, as well as our God, it can feel, to borrow the wonderfully visual words with which Mark describes the disciples in all of their busyness and in all the coming and going of people and amidst all the valid yet relentless needs, it can feel like there's no time even to eat. No time even to eat. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt, I don't have time to attend to myself, don't have time even for a brief break because there is just too much to do? I surely know that feeling. I know it all too well. The feeling itself is real, meaning that it's true that I am having the feeling. But the feeling is grounded in perception, an ageless and yet flawed perception, rather than in reality. Because as Jesus repeatedly reminds both the disciples and all of us in the passage today from Mark, there is time to eat. There is time to come away by ourselves to a secluded place and to rest for a while. And there isn't just time to do so, there's a need to do so. Because if we don't, then all our needs, either those we seek to redress for ourselves or those we seek to redress for others, will slowly deplete us. We'll constrict our capacity to continue the journey. 
will unwittingly make us feel more distant from the very one whom we seek to follow and to be close to, more distant from Jesus. Today's passage offers a sacred lens to see and to marvel at the ineffable grace with which Jesus bears up under all our needs and the needs of all humanity all at once. And equally, it is a call. It's a calm and wise and unwavering invitation as modeled by Christ himself to recognize that in order to serve and to follow Jesus, we must also take time, make time to eat, to rest, to be still, to simply be. And by doing so, and even more deeply, to be healed. Amen. Lord be with you. Love, being, beauty, Christ. You know us, which means you know how busy we are. 
well, how busy we choose to be. We rush on as if the world cannot possibly wait for our input and action, as though relentless activity is what you want most from us. Lord, save us. Save us from all this that we put on ourselves and then blame on other people. Save us. Live deeply in our daily lives, Lord Jesus, that we may know the fullness of who you are and all that you offer us. Be rest in our restlessness. Be peace in our urgency. Be a gentle touch of compassion in our anxiety. And Lord, carry the world in love so that we don't have to do it all on our own. Be present with our friends, neighbors, and loved ones who are hurting and struggling. Be love in the many places where peace, plenty, and good health are threatened. Afghanistan, South Africa, Cuba, Haiti, Venezuela, Syria, and in the Mediterranean where migrants are risking everything for a better life. Be present in areas where cases of COVID-19 are increasing and in the American West where heat, drought, and fires are raging. Help us to see you not only in those who are hurting, but also in those who are helping. For you, Lord Jesus, wear many faces, as many faces as there are people in the world. Could it be that our own faces are also your face, that you dwell within us too? Give us faith to imagine this, that we might remember again that we are yours and that you are ours, and that you and you alone are our joy, our delight, our everything. Amen.
fed and refreshed by worship's quiet center. May you go forth into the coming week with your eyes newly opened to the indescribable depth and breadth of Jesus' love for you and for all humanity. And amidst life's chaos and clutter, may you not merely find time, but in fact, make time to rest, to pray, and simply to be. God's peace to you and to your loved ones, and we'll see you next week.